Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Reconciliation in Truth, a homestyle Bible study where we present God's Word from God's perspective, and not man's. We study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. But we shun profane and vain babbling, for that will lead unto more ungodliness, in which also things we speak, not in the words that man's wisdom teaches, but that the Holy Ghost teaches. We compare spiritual things with spiritual. Now these three references can be found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Now ladies and gentlemen, I always ask you a very simple question before we start the study. Do you believe God and His Word as to what He says when you read His Word? Please answer this in your heart to God only. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at a subject concerning preachers entitled Denominational Preachers. Of whom of these can you trust? Absolutely none. But let's let Scripture show you this from God's perspective and not man's. And we're going to look at some biblical references here as to what it is to be a preacher and what it entails as to are they called today or do they chose to be one today? That is a question. But let's start out with your Bibles opening it to Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 10. And let's look, starting in verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believed, believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Very interesting. Kind of gives you a little insight as to what preachers are, who they are, and what they're supposed to preach on. Very interesting that it says in God's Word now, from God's perspective, that preachers are to be sent. Now, you look at today's so-called modern churches, denominationalism, even non-denominationalism, at your preachers. All these preachers predominantly have been in a man-made school, getting a man-made degree, being taught by man, and the doctrine that they teach is what man has come up with. Oh, they'll use scripture, absolutely, and they'll quote from scripture and they'll make them read the Bible but they'll make them read and study a lot of other things, things like systematic theology, to cover all aspects of so-called religion, which they have become synonymous with Christianity today, ladies and gentlemen. And if you remember from a previous study, we looked at who Christians are and what Christianity really is and where it belongs. Yet these preachers will also be taught to give stories, or what they'll call a sermon. They've even termed when Jesus was teaching his people, the Jews of Israel, on the Mount of Olives, during his earthly kingdom message, which was the gospel of the kingdom, which was he was a minister to the Jews of, very prevalent in scripture. They take that, and they call that a sermon. And they'll label it, 
label it Sermon on the Mount, even. Now let's look at this and break it down a little bit. The word sermon, ladies and gentlemen, is not even in Scripture. It's not even a biblical word. Did you know that? It doesn't exist in the Bible. Not at all. Not from Genesis all the way through Revelation. Man has come up with this term because man has thought over the centuries that man loves a good story. So what do you hear Sunday after Sunday after Sunday? Sometimes on a Wednesday, depends on how many times your local assembly meets and gathers to quote worship and hear the word of God. What do you hear? You'll hear a little bit of scripture. Most of the time it's taken out of content. In other words, wrong doctrine. It's not even for the body of Christ, which true doctrine for them and for us that as members of the body of Christ is from Romans through Philemon called the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ. They won't even go there. Very seldom will they. But they will take parts from the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, from the writings of Paul, from the writings of Peter, from the writings of everybody, and mix it all in and give you a story. Predominantly, the stories come from the Gospels of Jesus Christ on his earthly ministry. And then they try to bring it in to correlate it and make it as it is a not appears, but uh, as it uh, relates to the Gospels, as the stories they're trying to tell. And they tell practical stories of everyday life, things that have happened and how you can apply Scripture to them. That's not taught anywhere in Scripture by the people that wrote the Bible. In fact, there's only one place when I did a study on the great teachers of the Bible, Jesus Christ was the only one that actually explained his word. None of the other ones ever dared to. Yet preachers want to be preachers and teachers. They figure if they're one, they're qualified to be the other. Now, it's interesting because if you look at what a preacher does, he takes the word of God, a little bit of it, and take a verse or two, or maybe read a couple of verses containing a particular story in scripture and he'll go on and give you a good story that relates to it today. He then thinks he's qualified to teach the word of God. And then he'll take and give you the word of God and then tell you or say, let me show you or let me tell you what it means. Let me explain it to you as if you do not have the ability if you were saved from the Holy Ghost to teach you, which he does when he compares spiritual things with spiritual. But see, a preacher doesn't do that. They will tell you what they think it means from what they were taught. By whom? They were taught by man, ladies and gentlemen. They were taught by the seminary college they went to, which most of the time is lined up with the denominations that they preach in. And you look it up. Research your pastor. You will find 99% of the time that's the case. They are taught what to tell you. They are taught what to believe. They are taught how to give a good sermon, which has been honed by man over the last centuries and centuries. But we know who's behind all that because it comes from man. Satan is behind all that, ladies and gentlemen. He's behind all his sermons. You may not think so. You may never have looked at it from this angle. You may never have looked at it from God's perspective. See, God told us in his word that the word of God is complete. You'll find that in Colossians chapter 1, where Paul says he fulfilled the word of God. No more to come down the pipe, ladies and gentlemen. What we have is what we need for our salvation, according to God now, but not according to man. And if you remember in that verse I read here about uh, Romans, where they were sent. Okay? Now, let me give you another couple of references about preachers. 
ladies and gentlemen. And let's open uh, our Bibles to 1 Timothy. And let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. Now, this is Paul speaking. Paul says, by inspiration, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, by the way. He says in verse 7, Work unto I am ordained, a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity, in other words, in truth. So who ordained Paul? If you look closely, all of your ministers or preachers today are ordained. Who are they ordained by? Why? Their denominations by man. I don't care if it's Catholicism, I don't care if it's Lutheranism, I don't care if it's Baptists. Any of them, you can just look at them. Assembly of God, on and on the list goes. They are all ordained as preachers and teachers by their denominations. Even if it's a non-denomination, they are still ordained by man. Paul wasn't. Paul was given the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ personally by Jesus Christ alone. He was ordained by our very God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Big difference. But let's not stop there. Let's look at 2 Timothy. You that say you are called by God to be a preacher today. You ever hear that? This is my calling. This is, I couldn't, couldn't stop it. It kept coming and coming and coming, and I finally gave in to being a preacher because God was calling me to be a preacher. Ladies and gentlemen, today, this is what a preacher is. And we're going to find this in 1 Timothy I'm sorry, I was going to 2 Timothy, but let's go to 1 Timothy. And let's look in chapter 3 of 1 Timothy, verse 1. This is for today, ladies and gentlemen. Pay close attention to what it says versus what we said in Romans, chapter 10. This is a true saying. Verse 1, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Bishop synonymous with preacher. If a man desire the office, ladies and gentlemen, there's nobody called today to be a preacher. God's word. They make that decision themselves. That's a huge difference. So anybody that stands on a pulpit and tells you, I'm called of God to preach to you, he doesn't understand scripture, number one. Number two, in his finite mind, to his denominational studies, teachings, and whatever he was taught and whatever he believes, he tells you. And he wants you to believe that he was called by God to be a preacher to you. Nothing could be further from the truth, ladies and gentlemen. And it's very prevalent these days when you look at preachers and how they preach, what they preach, and to whom they preach. It, it's, it's amazing when they tell you stuff like that. Then if you go to 2 Timothy... The book of 2 Timothy. And again, you're going to find Paul saying something like this. In verse 11, he says, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. Well, who appointed them again? My great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
He didn't go to no seminaries college, ladies and gentlemen. He did not have a degree behind his name. He did not have a diploma from Dallas Seminary or Great School of Bible Studies. He didn't have none of that. He had a revelation from Jesus Christ himself, personally taught by the great God and Savior Jesus Christ. That gave him every qualification that was ever given unto man to be called by God to be a preacher. Nobody else is. You preachers out there that teach every day, stand in that podium or that pulpit and give a sermon and just go on and on and on telling people you are called by God to be a preacher are deceiving these people. But you've been deceiving them so long that you become deceived yourself. Now, is that possible? Yes, it is. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, Paul writes this under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So where does that put preachers of today's world, ladies and gentlemen, in the realm of all this? If they're standing up there and telling you they've been called by God, they've studied, they know scripture, they've been to a seminary college, they have their bachelor's, their master's, their PhD in theology, and they know what they're talking about because they are called of God to be a preacher. And they spend hours and hours and hours of studying what you don't, but they come up with these sermons and these stories that you like to hear, and they'll continue to give them to you, to keep you coming back and forth all the time to make numbers increase, to build a following, to make money, make it look good to the community, make it look successful. Then they can branch out in their own programs and even make more money, which so many of them do today, ladies and gentlemen, on the national market. It's really, really sad. There is no man today, ladies and gentlemen, none that are called by God to be a preacher of the Word of God. Be careful. Scripture, I just showed you from God's Word that if a man desires the office of a bishop, that is a good thing. And then it gives qualifications of what you need to be to be a bishop or a preacher. Same difference. But you see, none of these denominational preachers and none of these preachers that stand before you and tell them they were called of God to be a preacher will understand that because they do not rightly divide the word of truth. They will not see this. They will not see that in today's realm, dispensation of the grace of God, which is the formation of the body of Christ, which is the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, which was started and completed at the cross, by Jesus Christ himself. That's all done away with. You today, if you want to be a preacher in the body of Christ, you make that decision yourself. And it doesn't tell you anywhere in scripture, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to tell a story, that you need to give a sermon. That doesn't exist. A man brought that out. And that's the man that brings it on that does not rightly divide the word of truth. Because he will take scripture and give you wrong doctrine from the gospels of the kingdom, which is Jesus' earthly ministry. He'll mix it in with the gospel, the grace of God, which is the gospel Paul preaches for the formation of the body of Christ found in Romans to Philemon. And then he'll take writings from Hebrews on to Revelation, mix it all together and tell you great stories. That's the danger of today's preachers. You can't trust any of them because they're giving the wrong doctrine, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I have compassion for people that I don't want them to be lost. I don't want you to get wrong doctrine. I don't want you to be taught by false preachers and teachers. Who can you trust? Don't trust man. Don't trust me. 
Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your only hope. There's no other trusting in this world because there's nobody else who will give you the truth unless you read the word of God and believe what it is God tells you, not what man tells you. How many times have you ever went to a service, worship service, denominational or whatever, and you heard this, oh, you've done such a wonderful job, Mr. Preacher. It was such a great message you gave today. I was just so moved. You were so anointed by the Holy Ghost. And la da 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 it goes. And he's just standing there. That breast is swelling up, and his head is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And he's eating it up. That's not scriptural, ladies and gentlemen. Everything that was inspired by the Holy Ghost to tell mankind has already been done. It's written down in this book called the Bible, the King James Version, the unadulterated one. That's where it's at. It's not on the pulpit. If you want to be a good preacher, fine. That's a choice you make now in the body of Christ. And what does a good preacher do? Gives people the word of God. It says to give the happy the good news of the gospel. What's the gospel? A good preacher will give the gospel and he will not veer from the gospel. Even if he thinks people might be tired of hearing it, he should give it every time he's up in front of people giving the word of God. The gospel that can save you, that's the most important thing. That's why we're here, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we spend the time to give you the truth of the word of God because we don't want you to be lost and end up in hell and in the lake of fire. I'm not a preacher. But I believe so strongly in the word of God that it's his truth. I believe everything he says. I don't believe anything man says unless man absolutely lines it up with the word of God. Then he's speaking the word of truth, which is not even his word. It's God's word. Man's word cannot give you the truth. It's impossible. A good preacher will give you this. Every time you meet, day after day after day, he'll say, open your Bibles. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, ladies and gentlemen. 1 Corinthians, right after Romans. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, and this is what it says. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. Ah, there it is which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory that which I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. The preacher's telling you this, how Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. A good preacher, a true preacher of the Word of God will give you the Word of God already divided in the dispensation of the grace of God, which contains for your salvation the good news that's found in Romans through Philemon of the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, which was given to Paul to give to you and me. That's a good preacher. That's a true preacher. That's a preacher you can trust. And he can teach also. I don't have any problem with the preacher thinking he can be a teacher. As long as he doesn't embellish the word of God. Just give you the word of God. I just gave you the gospel. I'm not going to tell you anything more about it or anything less about it. It is what I just read you. You believe that? That's all you have to do. Because you will find in the books of Romans through Philemon that all you have to do is believe by faith and faith alone for your salvation. No works lest any man should boast, because I can show you from Scripture every verse to back up those things. And that's what a good preacher will do. If he says something, you say, well, let me show you in the Word of God. Where does it say by faith and faith alone? Where does it say by, not by works, but by faith? Good point. Go to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, which is right after Galatians. Go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. The book of Ephesians, chapter 1, 
plainly says, by God. In fact, let's go to chapter 2. It plainly says, by God. For by grace you are saved. Through faith, which is believing the gospel. By faith. That is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Verse 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Did I not just tell you that? This proves it. Do you believe it? Or are you going to go to your next meeting, whether day or week it's on, I don't care. Makes no snow to me. And believe what your preacher tells you to believe. Are you ever going to challenge your preacher? You can challenge me anytime you want. Because all I'm going to do is show you something more excellent, which is the Word of God. I don't argue the Word of God, and I do not debate the Word of God. I give you the Word of God. If you have a problem with it, you don't have a problem with me. You despise the very God that saved you. Look it up. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to sit here and tell you a great story about a so-called sermon when I give you the Word of God. I'm not here to build a following. I'm not here to make money. I am here to give you the truth at any cost to me. Because it says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, May I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? See, your pastor doesn't want to become your enemy. My goodness, no. He wants to appease you. He wants to have you like him. And he wants to be liked by your congregation the denomination, the community, and the world. So he'll tell you anything you want to hear. Is that surprising? Absolutely not. Because it's in Scripture, ladies and gentlemen. Open your Bible, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Because this is Scripture that I'm going to give you that you need to add heed to. Because this is what God says in chapter 4. I'll start in verse 1. It says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Paul talking to Timothy now. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Here it is. Two, preach the word. Be instant. In season and out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Make sure you have the right doctrine when you do all this. What is the right doctrine? Romans 2, Philemon. The gospel, the grace of God, and dispensation of the grace of God, which is the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ that was started and finished at the cross. Ushered in on the but now of the cross. The gospel of the kingdom stopped. The gospel of the kingdom will come again in the ages to come. But in the but now of the cross, which was shown many times in these studies, is what we're under. And it was in the constant mind of God before the world ever began because it is eternal. We are eternal. The gospel of the kingdom, they become eternal. They weren't to start with. We were to start with eternal. It says here in verse 3 now, continuing on, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. In verse 4, here's the danger. And they shall turn away from their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. Not only do the preachers need to be good preachers and teachers, but we that present the word of God from God's perspective need also to continue with verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Make sure that ministry is true. Make sure it's the word of God. Because I tell you this, as it says in 2 Corinthians chapter um, 2, verse 15, the more abundantly I, I am ready to spend and I will be spent. For the more that I love you, the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. So be it. That's the way it's going to be. But to trust a preacher today, ladies and gentlemen, that stands up and tells you they are called of God to preach to you and they have gone to the seminary schools, which is all from man, and Satan is behind all this, you do not trust these people. Call them on the carpet. 
what are you worried about? Are you worried about your reputation? Are you going to stand there and suffer in hell for eternity in the lake of fire saying, yep, I did this because I was worried about what other people might think of me. I did it because of my pride. I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be a piece of man, not of God. So that's what I did. And I'm suffering for it now and I can't reach out to other people and tell them not to do this and to be bold and take a stand for the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Because you can know nothing against the truth. Did you know that? You can only do something for the truth. Now that's scriptural. Again, I better be able to back it up. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. It says, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. You want to be in the truth? You want to have salvation? The true salvation that is for the body of Christ, not for the gospel of the kingdom? Big, big difference. The gospel of the kingdom, which Jesus Christ preached on his earthly ministry, was for works. And yet preachers today will jump and teach and preach over and over and over again. The gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Well, you've got to work. You've got to be baptized. You've got to take the sacraments. You've got to join the church. You've got to be uh, what is conf confirmed. You've got to do all this stuff. Not only to be accepted by us, but to join our congregation. And to show as a witness to the world that you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Wrong. You fall in that trap? Just think of how they're going to be judged, ladies and gentlemen. The ones that stand there before you and tell them, I am called of God to preach to you the word of God today. That's false doctrine. That's not even true doctrine. Because you're not called today. Paul was called by Jesus Christ personally. The very last one in this world ever to be called to be a preacher. We today, if you want to be a preacher, you make that decision. Same as a teacher. You're not called by God. The only thing we're called of God today is to keep the vocation of the Spirit of God and what He's already created, the unity of the Spirit of God in peace and harmony, nothing else. Ladies and gentlemen, do not trust man and do not trust your preacher because he is a device of Satan and Satan is behind it unless he's a true teacher and preacher of the Word of God according to the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ which is found in Romans through Philemon, the mystery of the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ which is the true doctrine for the body of Christ. That's the truth. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you listening. For the Ministry of Reconciliation and Truth.